This is Susan Wilbanks with BlendedInsight.com. I am a holistic and integrative healing arts practitioner, an intuitive and an energy healer. In this podcast, I share tips, tools, and suggestions that have helped me along my path in hopes of inspiring and helping you along yours. Let's get started with today's podcast topic. Hey, Bright Soul. Thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast. I hope you had a beautiful Halloween celebration. If you celebrate it wherever you are, I shared last week in my previous podcast about the gifts of Halloween. Here where I live, we got a really big snowstorm. We got mm, between 13 and 15 inches of snow where I live. So Halloween was super cold, but I made sure that I did my ritual as I always do, lighting a candle, thanking my ancestors, connecting with my intuition, blessing the world, all the things that I shared in my previous podcast. You know, the thing is with this weather and the snow, it's scary to drive in. You know, my car was sliding, trying to get my daughter to school, which is, you know, I just don't like that stuff. It's scary to me, but you invoke for divine blessings. You're thankful that you have a car. I'm so grateful that I have a home with heat. I, my heart goes out to all of the animals and the homeless people in our city that don't have shelter. So there's always a way to shift it and look at something that you can be grateful for. And so that is what I'm choosing to do. So for today's podcast, I wanted to talk about shifting from judgment to compassion. And this is just something that I've been noticing a lot lately. We all judge, it's the human condition. So whether you vocalize the judgment or you do it internally, it's just our programming. So it isn't anything that we need to beat ourselves up over. It's just something to become aware of. And sometimes the judgment is us judging ourselves. And in this type of work, the spiritual movement, the self-help movement, Sometimes we're a little bit harder on ourselves because we're wanting to walk a lighter path. We're wanting to be the light. And so at times when we have human moments, we can often judge ourselves really harshly. So the thing with judgment is judgment causes a separation energy. And I noticed this as an energy healer, whereas compassion creates a softening. It creates an openness. So when we are judging, we're not open to hearing, understanding, or even accepting other possibilities. And so I grew up in a very judgmental home because it was very pessimistic. And all that comes from, I grew up kind of in a small town. So it was the small town stereotypical thinking. And yes, it's stereotypical, but in the sense of really worrying about what other people think all the time. And so, I mean, I grew up with a mother that way. She's still that way. She's really worried about what everyone else thinks. So it's constantly judging and what is, why is that person wearing this and they shouldn't be wearing that and blah, 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 blah. And so that was my conditioning. And I noticed it in myself once I got out of the house and under that sort of um, influence, it kind of started to fall away, but I would notice it come out in myself. And I'm like, what is this? Well, I mean, in that instance, it just comes from an insecurity and If you're judging everyone else, you're basically making yourself superior. So it's like you have something wrong. I'm a little bit more superior because I don't have that wrong. And when I say wrong, it doesn't have to be physical or anything like that. It was just as simple as my mother used to, you know, talk about the way people, you know, what they were wearing or what they look like. And people still do that. They do it all the time. It's the human condition. And I've done it before. So I'm not lodging anything at her or I'm not judging her for that. I'm saying it's the human condition. But what I have noticed and what I've really tried to focus on in myself, and I'm not perfect, is trying to be a little bit more compassionate. As a single mom who works full time, I have a business, I've gotten a relationship um, a long time ago with a narcissist who ran up all this debt that wasn't mine in my name that I was responsible for. I've had very humbling moments and horrible experiences both of my brothers passed away 10 years apart in car accidents. Um, I've just been in bad relationships, you know, coming from an environment with no self-esteem, no self-worth. I chose people who were terrible for me. And so I ended up getting in these bad relationships where I'd have to pick myself up and start all over again. And it's really just coming from me not having the foundation of knowing what would be healthy for me and knowing that I am worthy of it. I just didn't have that. It's something that I had to teach myself, learn and do my healing work. So I used to sit and think because I've had so much hardship in my life when other people would begin to start telling me what they have on their plate and what they're dealing with, I would almost, 
I don't want to say that I was judging them, but more comparing all the things that I was dealing with, which seemed in my mind to be 400% more than what that person was dealing with. And I would get very, I would get closed off because it would annoy me because I'm like, oh my gosh, that's all you're dealing with and you can't handle it. Come over here and look on my plate and what I'm dealing with. I'm doing a ton. And that really isn't right because here's the deal. What may seem like a lot for me may not seem like a lot for another person and vice versa. So what I consider to be a little, someone else may consider to be a lot because we're all individual and we all came into this life to learn different things. Some people have a struggle with food. Other people don't. So when someone is struggling because they want to emotional eat, the person without a food problem could judge that. What's so hard about it? Just don't eat it. Well, it's because that isn't their struggle. And I even noticed this because I was going to, last year I went to um, a local, like it was like a, a keto clinic or a metabolic clinic where they just basically helped you to balance out your hormones with food. They did HCG and all those other things. And I remember having a conversation with one of the front desk gals and she was extremely thin, but she had other problems. She was telling me people would come in and it's like they don't want to do the work. They don't want to eat the correct foods. And she knew there was something else going on, but for her, it was so oversimplified because she's like, it's not that hard. Just don't eat the food. And I'm looking at her and she's very thin, but she didn't know her purpose. See, she had something else going on. She couldn't find her purpose. She was, didn't feel content where she was in her life. She, you know, had some self-esteem things going on, but she didn't have the food problem. So my point is, is that we each have challenges. So nobody comes into this life with no challenges where everything is just easy street. They have no um, ups and downs. They're just easy street, no problems, skipping through the world. The challenges are what help us to grow stronger. And so when I notice myself beginning to close off and judge, instead, I remind myself that I don't know the full story with that person. Everyone has a unique experience that is, you know, as unique as your DNA or your fingerprint. And what's true for me may not be true for someone else. That's the beauty of the world. And we can find people that share likes, you know, likes and differences with us. And we can, sh- we can share and, and find like-minded people. You know, for me, focusing on our shared struggles really helps to bond us. So like, for example, with the lady at the weight loss clinic, I know that she doesn't have the food issue. You know, I do have a food issue. I've shared that before. That's why I can talk very openly about what I learned with intuitive eating and stopping emotional eating. That's why I was trying to transfer all that over and develop the course with everything that I've learned through my holistic training and my own you know, in my own healing, but a lot of people that are empathic eat to ground themselves. Also psychics, you see a lot of psychics that are very overweight and it's because they eat to try to ground themselves. And that's because we can't do um, chemicals. <laughs> we, we, our bodies are too sensitive to go out and drink or do drugs or, or whatever it is that some people do. So everyone has some area where they really have to focus. So what do you do when there's someone who you can't help but to judge because their choices are just so different from yours. And maybe it's a family member or a close friend or someone that you can't separate from. How do you shift from judgment to compassion? Well, here is what I have found. It's always worked for me is just focusing on our shared difficulties. Because here's the thing, just your your outlet of how you have a shared struggle or a difficulty, the way that you express it may be different than mine. But the point is that we all have struggles. And we all have things that we have to overcome. And you may have a one gallon bucket of things that you can handle, whereas another person may only have one quart. Just because you're going through more than another person doesn't mean that what they're going through is not super hard for them for them because for them it is if they can only handle one quart that one quart is full whereas you have a gallon you could take a couple of those quarts and you'd be fine but we're all different the other thing that I've really been fascinated with with how the universe shows up is so this is really really common in the self-help world and I noticed I think it was like last month someone made this really insensitive comment on one of my Facebook pages it wasn't directed at me but They were trying to say something along the line of happiness as a choice. And I remember when I was first learning this material, and I believed that. I believe you can choose on what you focus on. But I also have grown and matured and learned to understand that all feelings are valid. 
no one is happy 100% of the time. That would be unbalanced living. We are here to experience all emotions and they're all valid and they're all okay. And it's more about how long you stay in that emotion. If you lament in it and then you allow it to drag you down, then we have a problem. But if you're just having some sadness or you're just feeling a little bit frustrated, guess what? Congratulations, you're human. <laughs> so denying it doesn't make it go away. When, when we stop trying to deny it and push it away, that's when we, we're actually getting into the flow and releasing. And that way it can pass through us and it won't stick because we're trying so hard to resist it. I hope that makes sense. Nowadays, it seems like a lot of people really struggle with depression and we have a suicide epidemic. There are a lot of people that are taking their own lives because they're looking for a way out. They're trying to soothe themselves and they don't see any other way. And so any type of addiction or thing that we do, we're just looking to soothe ourselves. And so I really tried to look at it like that. Like, whereas some people may have an alcohol problem for me, I may choose chocolate. I'm no different. I'm still trying to soothe. I'm still trying to emotionally handle something. So we all have our different ways of doing it. Maybe I exercise. I mean, in the past, I have totally ever over exercised because it gives me the endorphin release. And yeah, it's good for my body in moderation, but I was an over exerciser. That's actually not good. It's balanced in all things. So the, my point is, is like, I am not superior because I choose to eat chocolate or exercise over alcohol. I'm not any different. I'm not any on, on a emotional level of what the intent is. We are just expressing ourselves differently. And I remember years ago when I was first learning this work, I really didn't understand depression because I don't experience depression. I experience sadness, but that's just not something chemically that I've had to deal with. I, I really do believe that some people have an imbalance, an imbalance of some kind. And what I have noticed is that when people like they've tried everything and they finally decide to get on drugs, they feel guilty about it in the self-help movement. And what I have learned is that what works for you works for you. You are the CEO of your own health. And if you need to do something for your own mental health and well-being, you are in charge. Follow your intuition. It may work for you. That's why we have all of these things available to us. For me, I would try to make that a last resort. But I'm also not struggling with depression. <laughs> so it's like I can't speak to things that I'm not experiencing. And I actually had a conversation regarding depression and also cancer here recently with another alternative health provider. And him and I agreed that we we think that if our health was really out of balance like that, we would probably do a juice cleanse, which I've done before. We'd clean up our food, which I've done before, and do every holistic thing possible before going to the healthcare provider. But guess what? Everybody's not like us. <laughs> so it's like what somebody else chooses to do, let them do it. And let's not judge them for it. I'm raising my hand here. I mean, it's so common. It's something we rarely talk about, but it's so common. Really, honestly, everyone is just doing the very best they can. Everyone is just trying to deal with what's going on with them physically, mentally, emotionally, even spiritually with the knowledge and understanding that they have at any given time. Sometimes taking on a big feat like changing up your diet or getting into herbal nutrition, sometimes that's more overwhelming than just going to their doctor and getting a pharmaceutical to take the edge off. And then maybe they'll choose to do something else. Maybe they won't. But guess what? It's their choice. And I know that sometimes when it's someone close to us, like family members or close friends, you know, we want them to do things the way that we see it. But guess what? We can only control ourselves and how we respond to others. And so really, it's just more about the more okay you are inside yourself, the less those things impact you and the less you feel inclined to judge or close off from others. There's been so many times in my life where I'm just meditating. I feel so good in myself, like I'm feeding myself well, I'm moving my body, I'm doing my energy healing practices, I'm meditating, I'm sending loving kindness to everyone, I'm doing all of my services that I do for free on YouTube, blessing people, sending my mailing list, all the love and energy that I love to send them. I'm working with clients one on one, I'm getting all this great feedback from my clients. And I feel as though I'm really making a difference. And I'm having the positive impact on the world that I came here to have. And so when I'm in that state, if someone cuts me off and driving, like I'm driving and they cut me off and flip me off, 
I just kind of chuckle and move on. It doesn't stick to me. I'm not worried about it. If someone is doing something that I find to be over the top or offensive, it doesn't offend me. And I'm like, well, they clearly have other things going on. And this is the way they choose to deal with it. I'd choose to deal with it differently, but I'm not them. So, and I'm sure you've had those times in your life where it just doesn't affect you because you're so full from the inside. All of your overflow just flows out and it doesn't stick to you. And that's really the practice because we're not perfect. It's a practice and that's what we're striving to do. And that's what the way that ultimately would be the most peaceful way to be. But again, we're not perfect. So we make mistakes. The whole point is to just try to find the commonality, even if the expression is different. And so that is the way that I personally deal with judgment, my own judgment and shifting it to a higher state into into a compassionate state. And so I hope some of that helped you. And with that, let's just do a healing to just run beautiful healing energy on you. So if you could just go ahead and uncross your arms and legs. And for this healing, I'm just flooding you with beautiful healing energy. I'm cutting cords. in the past, including yourself, just cutting it away, clearing it. And just focusing on your breathing as I fill you with beautiful healing energy. subscribing to my newsletter, leaving me comments, leaving me reviews on iTunes. That helps so much. I just appreciate all your feedback and your support. It means a lot to me and it helps me to know that I am actually helping in some way. So I just want to thank you and I wish you an amazing week. Have some compassion on yourself, with yourself and others. It's important and it really does lift the vibration of the planet. Take care. Bye-bye.